And what about you? There's this agent on YouTube keeps putting videos up. And uh, there's a few more of them there. And uh, he's mucking about on the bench all the time. Does this guy ever do any work? Hey, it's, a, it's an un- unintended part two to this current flow video and it's basically uh, a few of the comments here now they're all very good and the comments are, are great guys you know it's a, it's in, all about engagement and get a discussion going and all that sort of jazz and i do reply most of the time and uh so there's super mario great video dave love the compass current meter in quotes uh that's igor from his channel cars exposed uh great explanation Aaron Carter, thanks for putting the effort in. There's Thomas uh, from Canada there. He's going to get a wee uni team meter. The Bell Sunday, all right. Where do you get that wee 10 out breaker from? Ian also lives in Canada, Scottish guy, and uh, always comments. Great guy. I got guys called Mark. Uh, always enjoy your videos. Uh, Karsten there from Denmark, I think. Ian comments quite a lot. Always appreciate it. I think he lives in Ireland somewhere. Johnny is an Irish guy who has buggered off to America. And he says, Dave, you're on another level. hope you can see this here. It's a bit of a glare there. It's not in front of it. Uh, don't know what that level is, Johnny. But uh, I don't know if it's a higher one or a lower one or what it is. Very well explained. Uh, these bottom two ones steve and this guy uh Sildren one so i don't i don't know uh Sildren one or steve actually he says i'd put a bulb in series instead of the fuse uh that would give you a constant current save you from resetting the breaker and if you don't have an ammeter a compass will give you current direction well then bother them thanks for the video love them very much appreciated the compliment there and i replied uh, you can read these comments for yourself, guys, like in this video. Uh, you can do it if you want, but you, you need a large current to distinguish. Also, the combat, com- the compass doesn't say they st- sable. I can nearly talk. So, uh, and I have another video where I use a wee compass there. So, I'm going to give that a wee try here in this one. Uh, uh, but this this guy here, Seldron, he was asking, how, how does this actually work? So, that, that's what we're going to do in this video. We're actually going to uh make one of these things so he said to me uh can you show what this current indicator looks like uh looks like inside it and how does it work and i said no i'm not taking it apart i need it i'm just showing you what it's used for so this isn't the ave channel i don't buy things and, and take them apart and rack them <laughs> So uh, I don't. That's not what I do. I show you how these things. What you can use, we cheap tools, we we things that to, to help you with your with your uh, fault finding and stuff. That's what this channel is all about. Don't take stuff apart. So I'm not going to do a tear down in this video. I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to do a tear up. Uh, don't know whether that's the right term or not. Probably not. Probably isn't. So I'm going to actually make one and show you how it works. So he goes on to say he was searching the internet and I can't find the principles of how this should work. How can this measure DC current without any internal batteries? Question mark. Uh, there have to be some type of hall sensor and say, maybe somebody knows the answer. And I replied uh, at the very last there and I says, well, Google the right hand grip rule. So we're going to do a tear up video, which is the opposite of a tear down. So when I've got this screen up, just before we do anything, there's our wee boy over there, and uh, if we see, it's not at zero there exactly. And I'll push, pull it forward towards the screen here, or back away from me. Or we can see it registering. It's nearly touching the screen. It's not quite touching. So this thing works in magnetism induction 
So I mentioned the, the right hand grip rule. So here's a conductor. So if I put my hand in it, my thumb out, my right hand. So that is the direction of current flow. That is the magnetic flux going around it in that sort of clockwise direction there. And that's current flow. If, I turn my, if the magnetic flux goes the other way, the current flow is in the opposite direction that way. So that video was all about direction of current flow. And that's why the wee indicator is in the middle. So this, this is to tell you the direction. Not necessarily the magnitude, but the direction. So that way or that way, depending on what way the magnetic flux is, is going around the conductor. So we've got a wee lamp there. We know it pulls about four amps, just over four amps. We've got a compass. Uh, if we put it on the red there, it does uh, move, as we can see there. But does it tell you the direction of current flow? Put it on the negative. And if you're going around, what I was on about was orientation was if you're going around a, a loom that's going all over the place, you know, you're sort of going to get lost with what way that, that needle's pointing. So it does move, yes, it does, that will work, but, you know, is it a valid test? It's more confusing, I think, than anything. If we use our wee meter um, with just four amps flowing, yes, it does move, but uh, on this particular one with the scale, not that much, unless you, you wrap that around it a load of times or something. So, and faint and short, yeah, you're really going to see it. So the idea of using fault current to actuate some sort of indicator is a long-established method. So uh, that is, if you have a, an expansive network, and the wee wire and loom there, uh, you know, that loom's only a couple of meters long, really. Uh, but if you, if you have a network that's miles and miles long, so something like that, but I can't really show you that, because that is intellectual property. Uh, but we'll draw, we'll draw something simple out. So if you have your source breaker here and you have a circuit that goes out and it branches off and branches off and branches off all sorts of places like that. And you have <coughs> a fault here down to earth. So what you can do then is uh, you put indicators on, so you, you'd want to put one on a strategic place, so you'd maybe put one on there, and you may put one on here, and uh, you close that back in again. So whenever you close whenever you close that back in again, the fault current then goes down that path to earth. So that indicator there will indicate this one here will not, so it will show you right away your fault's down that branch. You saw me using uh, wee resettable fuses there. You can get these uh, on our favourite marketplace. There's a Mini and there's a Maxi. So they're quite handy to have. Uh, not that dear. This is a larger version of that. This can take... Uh, the meter goes up to 600 amps on it there. I'll just show you that. So there's wee LED indicator on it here. This is what's called a fuse mate. So what this allows you to do is do a reclose on a circuit from a distance because it's remote control so I can demonstrate we'll have this tester here so it tells you whether it's basically just opens and closes this and there's a breaker in here but there's also a protection fuse in the top and that black thing there is a blast cover in case it explodes I'll just take that off and <laughs> it drops to the ground uh, so in here is uh, what's called an HRC fuse, a high rupture capacity fuse and you, you unscrew those two ends and that comes out. So I'll just show you one of that. So in the top here is this fuse that goes in there. So that's a, an over, over current protection fuse. The way this works is a wee gas bottle in here and that throws the contacts so that that closes these two contacts here which would be across the contacts there. So this is an HRC fuse, high rupture capacity. It's not just an ordinary fuse. And most fuses, if not all fuses, have some sort of what's called a fuse characteristic. You can see the HRC there. 
So it's a fuse characteristic. So this fuse, it's rated at 400 amps, but it'll take about twice that for about 20 minutes. So it won't rupture right away. So it's, it's what's called uh, an exponential uh, curve on it, where if you have uh, thousands of amps, it'll, it'll rupture in a very short space of time. So time against uh, current, show you that in a graph. So if we'll have current and uh, time here. So a high current, short space of time for rupture. So the graph goes like that. So the higher the current, the, the shorter the time. So the smaller the current there, it can sustain that for a longer period of time. So that's, that's it called the fuse characteristic. Let's show you this in action. So here we have switch open. So we'll turn it on. And remote control, two buttons, so you can't accidentally uh, press the button. So you stand from a, a distance and and that's closed it in. So you get an idea of the current that's flowing on that meter. So if that goes away over 600 amps or it might settle down. If it goes over 600 amps, you know, we've got, uh, we've got a lot of fault current flowing. The bigger brother of that wee device I showed you there is, is this thing. This is called a, a resap. So uh, what you do here is you set the amount of current, you set the, the maximum current rating, and you can set it for up to like 10 closures. So it'll automatically reclose and will open at the, the amount of current that you set it at. So some of these are quite smart and uh, you, just, you just leave it there and it'll, it'll reclose whenever the fault occurs. So for intermittent faults, uh, that's a that's a good tool to use. Uh, some of them are a wee bit smarter than that. They, you can put a SIM card on it. I'll send you a text every time it opens, and stuff like that. And there is a similar device uh, for use in the automotive. It does something very similar to that. And you may see uh, the barrel Keith DeFazio using that Pulsar. Uh, it's I think it's probably only available in America. But it's, it's essentially the same as that Resamp, only for automotive use. So you can set the, the amount of current you want, and it'll pulse it. It'll, it'll reclose in again, and you use indicators then to, to check your fault down. And that's an automotive version of the, the Resamp. And uh, New Level Auto, check his channel out, and uh, you may see him using that there. So we're going to make a DC ammeter, and uh, a few B bits and pieces here. I have a box of box of springs, and... Uh, I selected a couple which uh, aren't too big if we can get them out of the box. So move over to the side there a minute. And we'll have a magnet. So needed a few of these magnets. So we'll stick a few of them together. And uh, what I did simply was put these two wee springs like that. And we taste the glue, we taste that hot glue on it there. We've got a cap, so we're going to set that inside a cap and we're going to wrap a little wire on the outside of it. And then as a needle, we'll have a cable tie and uh, we'll glue that onto the cable, glue that on and that's going to swing back and forward for us. So I'm not going to show you the bell because it's, it's self-explanatory. So after 10 minutes of hard labour, we have come up with this. So I got a, a small, a slightly smaller recap, just so the spring would, would bridge it, and uh, it'll uh, bounces about there. So that's our, our cable tie glued onto it. There's a f three of them wee magnets in it, and there's a coil wrapped around the outside of the cap. So that's going to create our magnetic field, and the with when we pass current through it, and uh, these wee magnets will get affected by the magnetic field and that'll that'll point a that'll point a wee current at us. So very HM and bulb there connecting series and uh, we're gonna get a bit of current flowing th through this winding here and see what happens. Mm. Now to put a scale on it and calibrate it. 
So there we go, we've got a scale on, so uh, yeah, I think the last time I made something like this, it was like 40 years ago, I was in school, but uh, yeah, okay, so there's zero, and uh, we've got a digital one meter there, as you can see, so 3.9 amps, say 4 amps, so that's about 4 amps there, say 4 amps, okay with that, so we'll swap our polarity, here and we'll get her to chit the other way, hopefully. There we go, and we'll call that. Oops, me. Four amps. Right, we've got a PWM controller on the on the go here. That's wired in, uh, so power's going into it, and then so it's it's powering there. Our our ammeter, our moving coil ammeter, and uh, well, it's not a moving coil ammeter, it's a static coil, but it's a magnetic coil ammeter, if you want to call it that. So we'll click her on, and we'll do, get her to bed an amp. There they are, one amp. So there's one, one amp there, if my marker would work. So we'll get her up to two amps. Very fine adjustment here. This precision work. This is uh, all in the name of science. It's all been already done this, you know. This is not new. And, oh, I'm going to have to lean forward here. And do a terrible looking two. And then we'll go up to three. And three is going to be there. So it's sort of linear, isn't it? And we'll take her up the. Let's just share the four, isn't it? 3.8. So we'll take that back. The zero. It's not zeroing very well with the wee, the wee springs jumping about. So we'll swap these leads over and do the other one. Okay, I've saved you the grief of uh, watching me writing, uh, scrolling wee numbers on a flimsy bit of cardboard there. I know they're terrible looking, but I, I do really for this. Uh, we're not going to sell, I don't think we're going to sell any of these here, so uh, I'll just show you. I'll just show you the scale in here, so where's that? Get her up to two amps there, and up to three, and right up to nearly four. So, so there you go, uh, that's our homemade DC current ammeter, which the principal operation of that is exactly the same as that. So uh, principles don't change. Electrical principles are, have been the same for hundreds of years, and uh, it's just discovering wee methods here of uh, really showing how things work. So that's it. Uh, if you like this sort of stuff, like, share, comment, subscribe, by all means comment. Comments are great, as I said before, and uh, thanks very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, we bit of mucking about there. So I'm going to take this down now and uh, get, try and get my magnets back. So uh, we, we cardboard scale there and go all in the bin. So you can, by all means, try this yourself. A few wee bits. It took me 10 minutes to make that. So hope you enjoyed it, as I say, and uh, many thanks for watching. And all the best and bye-bye.